This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by Raycon, Upstart, Omax Cryo Freeze, and Manscaped. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it at Studio Night Pants. I'm Ryan Sickler. RyanSickler.com on the website, Ryan Sickler on all social media. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. So many of you already have, but if you want to watch the do every Tuesday, you got to go subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash rsickler. Uh, we're starting to add time codes in the post now, too. So if you got a favorite story from the episode, you can go look in the bottom of the post um, and there'll be some time codes there where you can jump right to your favorite part. Uh, the Patreon show, The Honeydew with Y'all. I'm having a great time highlighting the lowlights with y'all. I've had a few friends come on first uh, while we iron out kinks and everything. Uh, but hell, so far I've talked to a, a guy whose father came out in his 40s, a girl who had two pussies. Uh, we had... <laughs> We had a, a guy whose wife developed an online video game addiction. I mean, shitty parents. We're getting all of it right now, and I love talking to you guys about it. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to the Patreon show and uh, send your stories. There's one place to send your stories, honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. If you or someone you know you think has a great story to share, submit it there. We'll go through it and hopefully eventually get it on and do an episode with you. Um, also make sure you're subscribed to the Facebook fan page, uh, for the honeydew and for Ryan Sickler. We got all the information coming at you over there. And then the website for the show is the honeydewpodcast.com. That's where you can go find out everything and anything about the honeydew, <clears throat> excuse me, including the merch. And I cannot thank you enough. Night pants nation. We're growing. We're growing. We're getting stronger and stronger. Uh, the mugs. These mugs are actually just a gift for every guest that comes on the show. But you guys have asked so much that we're going to get them in the merch store. They'll be up soon. You can buy the mugs. You guys have also asked about the gray hoodie I wear. It was just one that I had, but we're going to put gray hoodies up. And night shorts. Y'all keep asking about night shorts. Uh, it's going to happen. Night shorts are going to happen. We're going to be a night pants, night shorts nation. All right, now... If you live in LA uh, and you need musical instruments or lessons for you or your kids, go to Santa Monica Music Center. I record here, as you know, they're a family-owned business, been serving the community for 50 years. They're great people. Um, and you can get online classes right now from uh, trained Los Angeles musicians, all right? Not just guitar lessons. These guys, there's plenty of lessons you can get here, all right? And if you go to santamonicamusic.com right now and you use code HONEYDEW, they will waive the registration fee and they'll give you one free lesson when you sign up for a package. If you have any questions, there's a website, uh, or excuse me, a phone number on the website. Feel free to call them and talk to them. As I always say, ladies and gentlemen, these are the stories behind the storytellers. We're over here highlighting the lowlights. And today, I'm super stoked to have this guest on. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tommy Lee, everybody. Hey, hey. Ah, I'm so excited, dude. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Dude, yeah, first, good to see you, man. It's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. And also, yeah. thank you for putting up with me. I came to do Britney's podcast like a week ago, and I was, I, I wanted to, pro look, I'm a respectful dude. I wanted to properly meet you as Britney's husband. Because I've known Britt for forever. I and I was like, it's a pleasure to finally meet her husband. And then I was like, get out of the way, Brittany. Let 16-year-old <laughs> Ryan Sickler be Tommy. And I hugged you. And you uh, you accepted it. And I appreciate the shit. <laughs> I appreciate the shit out of That's awesome. Uh, so thank you for being That's here. Awesome. And we're going to we're gonna have some fun. But before we do, please, right now, promote everything. You got the new album out. Plug all of it. Yeah. Um, new record. It's called Andro. Um, the, there's two singles that are out now. Um, one is called tops, um, featuring, uh, push, push South African rapper who spits serious fire. Um, and another track called knock me down, uh, featuring Kilvane, which is a super, super heavy, almost screamo rock rap joint that's just you want to break shit when you hear it it's one of those yeah 
but in anyway, um, the singles are out. The album drops October fifteenth. Okay, I think I can get in that date right. And the reason the record is called Andro is because uh, one side is all male energy of the record. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm talking old school like vinyl, although it is coming out on vinyl also. Other side is uh, all, one side's female, one side's male. And I, just, I remember just, you know, trying to sequence the record. You know, you got all this body of work done. And I'm, okay, this track into this track. Okay, that's cool. Nah, uh, man, that key doesn't work going into this track. And I just... I, I spent forever trying to get it to, to just play down really dope, right? And at some point, I just went, you know what? Hold on a second. I just split split the female energy and the male energy and kind of let them kind of dance on their own sides. And they rent. it just, I was like, now it all makes sense. And uh, so that's kind of where that... It, that organically came about because that wasn't what wasn't my intention. To, I love. To, has that ever been done before? I don't. Not that I know That's of. Somebody said Jack man. White may oh. have done it, but I don't know that. I never heard of anyone That's doing great. it. That's great. So it's cool. So like whatever vibe you're you're in, it, there's something for everyone on the record. It's really cool. That's great, yeah. man. Good for you. I love Thanks, that you're brother. still doing. How old are you now? I am fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Do you look great? Thanks, man. Fifty fucking seven, and I know that drumming and being on tour is hard work, so you got to stay in shape. So I have so I'm, look, I have a million questions, but the first thing I want to <laughs> say is this: like, you're my favorite drummer. I mean, look, thanks, I, man. I love rest in peace, Neil Pert just passed recently. Oh, uh, Bonham was fantastic. I was a, I'm a big Mitch Mitchell fan because I just love Jimi Hendrix. You know, there's so many good drummers out so there. So many, man. Buddy Miles, I was a big Buddy Miles fan, but you. Yep. I grew. I came up with Motley Crue. I grew up on your music. I remember coming home every fucking day in the summer with "Home Sweet Home" being number one so long. I bet here come the girls' titties. There's Tommy hitting the drum. Like every, <laughs> yeah, you knew, like they retired yeah. it. I think they retired it because you were so undefeated. Yeah, they were yeah. like, we gotta give somebody else a chance. I it's been nine that. years. Yeah, it's on MTV for oh, like ever. We're like, dude, ever, bro. whoa. Yeah, it's yeah. Give so somebody good. else a chance. Right. Give somebody else a chance. Jesus Christ, you guys have been doing this for two years. Uh, it was on for like I felt like my whole high school. Yeah. But the like, you were always this the, this larger than life figure in this rock band. But then you did that show. Tommy Lee goes to college. Ah. Uh. And man, I, I I was telling your manager I loved it because you became like a person to me. That I was like, oh, because the thing was you didn't. And that's where this picture is from, University of Nebraska, where he went. Shout out to University of Nebraska. Yeah, go, go, go Big Red. And That's so rad. And that a great? That's when Segura and I were there. It's, uh, I kicked field goals on your stadium. I could have I helped you guys win this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember thinking, also thinking like, oh, this will be a, a cakewalk for him. He's a fucking drummer. He's going to go drum in a marching band. What's the big deal? And then watching you struggle with that struggle with the college life but you you took it seriously and you were frustrated and you were disappointed and embarrassed you weren't like whatever i can i get to go back to la and play in fucking motley Crue. you yeah, didn't, like, you no didn't treat it like that and i was like yeah this dude's this dude's awesome are you from nebraska no i'm from maryland okay yeah, cool. yeah. i got you i was just i thought there was some other association there um yeah that you know i typically wouldn't do a show like that. It's just something that, you know, something I don't do. And then when I was approached about doing it, say, come on, oh, that mic up on when I was approached about doing uh, Tommy Lee Goes to College, um, I was kind of sold on the idea that, like, look, we're taking this rock star out of the, his element and we're going to throw him in, like, middle America... First of all, I, I I never went to college. I, I didn't graduate high school. I quit. You didn't? I quit my senior year. I got a recording contract, and I was like, "How far into your senior year? I was like, year? diploma. <laughs> oh, go, go, go go rock the world. <laughs> Let me think about that. Uh, fuck that. I'm out. So <laughs> I yeah. just officially graduated. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember my parents going, "My God, you only have three months That's to go. Okay. Just finish God. school. What if yeah. this music thing doesn't work out?" I'm like, "Oh, it's gonna work out." <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so, so, so this is like, I'm like, 
So they're like, we're going to stick you in the middle of middle America. People are going to bug the fuck out that, A, you're going to college. And I'm thinking, well, fuck, I never did get a chance to go to college. And I heard about rowdy college parties and shit. I mean, that's a college town. And I'm thinking, yeah. you know what? This could be really fucked up in a fun, weird way. I'd get to check out a semester of college, see what it's like, and and freak some people out. So why not? And so ended up doing the show. And yes, um, I was put to uh, put to the te- did the party in did the party and got that in. <laughs> yeah, but like. <laughs> Like you, know, you had to, though. Yeah. You had oh, to. Those people like, would have never let you not do that. Man, yeah. like, the, like <laughs> weird. Like, and I partied like a maniac, and I had not really know about keg stands and like, <laughs> and like co- college party and shit. Like, you know, they got some, Tommy Lee's doing keg stands in our know, house. All right, like, oh, all right. <laughs> oh, no. Pretty fun, but but it was frustrating, man. It was crazy because. Um, you know, I did like what did I do? Uh, horticulture was one of them, which I love. I I think I was a plant in, in a past life. I just naturally know. Like I could we could walk outside now and I could tell you what the botanical name of that tree is. Really? Where I got that information of uh, from? I don't know. So that's why I'm, 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 I must have been a plant. Um, uh, I took. What did I take? Ah, oh, fuck chemistry. I'm like, oh, chemistry is going to be dope. We're oh, gonna... so you did get to pick your classes? Y- yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, I thought they just assigned them yeah, to you. you no, got the... no. <laughs> they I... let you be a real student then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all I'm right. like, oh, chemistry, dude. I'm just picturing beakers, explosions, yeah. fucking crazy shit, right? Okay. So, and of course, music. So let's go rock the drum corps. Um, what else? Uh, oh, uh, uh. uh physics or some shit i was like oh okay let's do this way out of my league way out of my league um but anyway the music portion i was like oh this is gonna be dope because i i did uh drum corps marching band in high school and junior high school so i'm thinking this is gonna be a piece of cake on just but just on a college level this is big and uh it was everything I just did not expect. I was completely overwhelmed with, you know, I had learned um, in school how to read music, playing piano, but never really drum. Uh, Saw you on that Home Sweet Home video uh, to play that d- piano. D- yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Saw I took you. piano <laughs> lessons and shit like that. Drum, I, drumming, I taught myself. Okay. Um, so I didn't, never really did the technical sheet music drum stuff. So now I got this shit whipped out in front of me, and I got a, a drum captain, uh, my buddy Ben, and he's just looking at me. I'm looking at this shit like it's Greek, and I'm Greek, and I can, don't <laughs> understand it. And I'm like, dude, I am I'm lost. I have no idea what's happening here. And he's he's just looking at me, just shaking his head like you're fucking Tommy Lee. You don't know, <laughs> right? I'm yeah, like, no, you don't understand. I play by feel, but yeah. you know, it's inside me. It comes out. I don't read it off paper and then play it. You know, mm-hmm. so this is a totally different animal. And man, the frustration, insane, insane. And you got all these drummers, and they're all badasses. Like they got they got chops. They're not rock chops. They're not drum set chops, but they're rudimental like yeah. these double double triple stroke rolls flamadiddles just the, all this crazy shit so that was a really frustrating uh thing for me as a drummer just to be pretty much knocked back down to like hey here's this is a whole other side of drumming that you you don't know what the fuck you're doing yeah that's you know? i loved it man so, it's cool you how know? are your grades um, not so good, <laughs> not so good, but I got, so well, I got, you tried, I, I you tried, tried, I tried like, tried. A, I tried like a motherfucker. I did well in horticulture. I was going to say, I'll bet you uh, did do good uh, in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, uh, in, at, fit, I had a, 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 a tutor who was cute. That was a good part of it. So <laughs> I, I, I did enjoy, I did enjoy the, 
sort of after hours studying, yeah, I guess you sure. call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think, wonder why your grades suffered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it was cool. It was really a cool experience. You know, I, I look back on it now and I'm like, I'm glad I did that. And I got a chance to see also the real side, like you said, yeah. the, the personal side of somebody who's, you know, frustrated and, you know. And wanting to be professional and taking it seriously and yeah. not just hot dogging it for a fucking TV show. So many yeah. people just go on TV to be on TV. Like, you were like, if I'm going to do this, I'm really going to do this. And, yeah. I, and it came across and I was like, fuck, yeah, this is a good show. That's cool, man. Yeah, I loved it. Thanks, buddy. So let's go back to the beginning. You're a Greek boy. So you were born in Greece? Born in Athens, Greece, yeah. And then you moved here when? How uh, old are you? Uh, almost two. Okay. See, I, I grew up with Greek guys in, ba in Baltimore. Um, and I was saying, I said this on an episode before. Everything was Malacca. Oh, That's I'm Malacca. Like, everything. Yeah. Oh, you're Malacca. Everything. Malacca, <laughs> Malacca, Malacca. Every, like, I was like, Jesus Christ, you guys say it. And then, you know, we talked about it. It's like jerk off and everything else. But yeah. Everything was Malacca. But their dad owned this. It was in West Baltimore too. It was in the. It was in a rough neighborhood. Uh, they were Greek immigrants. They would do the whole lamb in the backyard and oh, everything yeah. for Easter and all that shit, like in their yard, just right. Beautiful, in the so <laughs> yeah, so right Greek yard, style, bro. dude. Uh, but he had a like a pizza sub shop, and we would go on deliveries and deliver them all around the city, and then he would just give us food. But his shit was the best Greek oh, man. food, man. Yeah, they'll that, marinate that yeah. lamb for like. Almost two days. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, the, there's no joke. So both your mom and dad are, are Greek then? No, my, no. my mom, full, full, full bone Greek, father American. Okay. Um, they're both gone, God bless them. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, my, my father met my mom uh, in the, when he was uh, stationed out okay. there um, in the army. And uh, they got married, had me. And then we uh, moved to Los Angeles, and I've pretty much grown up here okay. my whole life. So, so then, who was the person, or what was the thing that got you into specifically drumming? <sighs> um, was it hearing it in some music, or was your dad into it? Mom into it? My my dad actually played played some drums in 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 school in the marching band, um, although he didn't really he didn't. He, he didn't really like teach me drums. It was weird. Um, from what my parents said, as soon as I was tall enough, probably like, you know, when you're between the ages of one or one and two, you're able to start walking around and opening and closing yeah. cabinets. I they said as soon as I was able to kind of get into shit. So I'm assuming around two two years old, I was pulling out pots, pans, boxes, anything. And just wailing, I just, they just said, you just started playing on everything that made noise. Uh, my poor parents, I must have driven them fucking, <laughs> oh, yeah. fucking crazy. But right? it worked. It yeah. worked. Yeah. <laughs> if it didn't, it yeah, yeah. sucked. Yeah. Um, so it Beat up all my Tupperware, goddammit. I know, yeah. Why couldn't you fucking pick the fucking flute or something? Why the drums? <laughs> they were so supportive, though, man. I really had super dope supportive parents my dad who's a mechanic um uh in, in services and also for the la county road department serious mechanic gave up for a man who's a mechanic to give up his his man cave which was the garage with all of his tools and shit he gave it up he gave me three quarters of it and just left enough room for his tools and all of his shit and he built me a soundproof room Damn. In, inside the garage. It was a room inside of a room. A, he didn't want to hear it. Yeah. You know? And uh But he did want you to play. But he wanted me to play. You know? And also keeping you home on the drums is keeping you off the streets. True. You know. Yeah, Even yeah. though you still find the streets. It's just yeah. keeping you off the streets a lot less. <laughs> yeah. But he was so supportive, dude. Uh, this is how how crazy supportive. Fun, you know. What's your dad's name? Uh, David. David, all right. Yeah. And he, being mechanic, mechanical engineer guy, um, but I, but, you know, put, we put together this, our first, like, little band, and we're, like, playing, like, high school dances and shit like that, and we're, like, we need a, like, 
fuck, man, we need like a lighting system and we need like pyrotechnics. Dude. I love that you needed pyrotechnics. <laughs> we need fire, goddamn. It's like fire. <laughs> Wait, so, what was that band's name? Do you remember? It, it was called US 101. <laughs> The freeway. The, the freeway. <laughs> yeah. Man, what are we going to call ourselves? How do we get here tonight? The 101. Yo, we're the 101. We're the, 101. We're the US 101. Yeah. Dude, my dad gets these blocks, these like two by four blocks, drills holes through them, puts these metal, like uh, kind of like uh, prongs through them. They're, they're wired to a switcher box. Now you got these prongs coming up with a little like <laughs> kind of guitar string wire. Yeah. Right? And as soon as you, and then the steel pipe, he'd cut like a mortar. Right? <laughs> For high school shows. Yeah, so, so the shit would launch, right? And you set it on, on, on the, over the prongs, fill them up with, with a couple of caps of gunpowder. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. And he's got the switcher box. And we're in my, okay, we're in my backyard, okay? And this is like. Where? Where do you live in, in California? Covina, California. <laughs> I know, I know, I know okay. Covina well. Okay. Yeah. So we got na- there's neighbors. <laughs> yeah, it, it, a lot of we're, neighbors. We're, we're all right, yeah. you know, we you know, middle class, <laughs> family, urban, you know, I mean, really like small uh, neighborhood, and and uh, there's explosions happening in the backyard. My dad's testing the shit. He's like, clear, <laughs> and in my backyard, it's like boom. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, Christ. he he was so into it. He yeah. was like a little. He was like a little kid. Yeah. So he's making pyro. Then he he built. <laughs> He built like a lighting system. Took a chopper down in the service with this fire. (laughs) (laughs) Totally, dude. All his army shit was coming out. Get the dynamite and the grenade launcher. The the kids got a show tonight. (laughs) He couldn't wait on that. Oh, he had the best time, man. That's what I would do, too. Wouldn't you figure out a way? If you didn't play an instrument, you'd be like, I want to be involved in this. Let me get my If I could help my kid and do do whatever I could to make it super badass that's for him awesome, i would man. and that i is have awesome yeah. that you're so lucky to have a dad like that man. Uh, dude blessed so you would you would do backyard shows back in the day it, yeah oh yeah Be, oh yeah all the time backyard parties so let me ask you this parties because you said david lee and then it made david lee roth pop into my fucking uh, head real fast but i've a friend of mine told me her brother's older than we are and said that they used to play because they came up out here obviously as well but they he used to go see them at backyard parties back in the day, sort of as they were forming Van Halen, do you, yeah. you guys would play back? I mean, so there are people out there that saw Tommy Lee play a backyard high school party in Covina, California. Oh, yeah, all over the place. Oh, wow, that's awesome, all, man. All over the place. And Vince, uh, my singer in Motley, of course. he was in, a, co- he was in a, a cover band called Rock Candy, doing the same thing, backyard kegger parties. So people had seen us doing that kind of stuff, and... One day, putting together Motley, I'm like, man, I went to school. We're looking for a singer. Um, we're looking for a singer. And I'm like, I know this dude, man. All the chicks love this dude. Like, he's he, he goes to my school. He's, he's fucking dope looking, has a killer voice, sings awesome cheap trick covers. And, <laughs> like, just like, and, you know, he's just he's just killer. I think we should we should grab him. And so we stole him out of his band and he came and auditioned for Motley and the rest is kind of history. But I mean, we were man, doing the same thing, it? same age, doing the same. The four of you. Yeah. At that age. So people saw the original Motley crew at backyard parties. Well, was, was everyone in at that time? The, everyone was, everyone was in a, a band doing something okay. at, that, to- at that time. Yeah. And yeah. then you all came together and boom. Yeah. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our first sponsor, Upstart. During these economically turbulent times, everyone's looking for a way to feel more financially secure. So if you're still needlessly throwing money every month at high interest credit card debt, it's time you checked out Upstart, the revolutionary online lending platform that knows you're more than just a credit score. Now is the time to find out how low your Upstart rate can be to help pay off high interest credit card debt. Unlike other lenders, Upstart can reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. You don't need a degree or a diploma to apply, though. Upstart lets you skip going to the bank because it's completely online. They offer loans from $1,000 to $50,000 so you can consolidate your debt into one easy fixed rate payment. Upstart makes it fast and simple to check your rate. Since it's just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull happens if... 
you accept your rate and proceed with your application. And the best part is if the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. Over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt and get back to using your money your way with Upstart. See why Upstart has a 4.9 out of 5 rating on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash honeydew to find out how low your Upstart rate can be. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash honeydew. Our next sponsor is Raycon. So whether you're working from home or working on your fitness, you want what you're listening to to be what you're listening to, not what you're friends listening to your kids are listening to the person next to you is listening to everyone needs a great pair of wireless earbuds but before you go dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair you need to check out the wireless earbuds from raycon look i use my raycon earbuds i use them all the time i well i was traveling with them i still use them to exercise i use them around the house i use them for calls honestly they're my favorite earbuds i've ever had you already know Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, and then they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands that you know. But their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise-isolating fit. Raycon's wireless earbuds are so comfortable, they're perfect for conference calls or binging podcasts like the Honeydew and the Honeydew with y'all. Unlike some of your other wireless options, Raycon earbuds are both stylish and discreet with no dangling wires or stems to distract anyone during video calls. You've heard me talk about how the company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop, Cardi B, Brandy. They're all obsessed with Raycon. So pick up a pair and see what the hype is all about. Now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash honeydew. That's B-U-Y raycon.com slash honeydew for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash honeydew. Now let's get back to the do. I mean, I, I just, you know, when I got live wire the first time, I was like, Jesus, I want to ask you because... Um, on with the show is just it's just one it's it's one i it sticks with me every time it comes on one. right it is a good one man it's so fucking raw is that it is about a real friend right is that or or is it loosely about someone loosely yeah, yeah. that's yeah. such a great fucking song it is that's a it's a great melody man i love that one your shit is so fucking good. and it's got that um uh what am i thinking of uh uh um uh, who was that? Pretty woman. Roy uh, Orbison. Roy Orbison. And that yeah. it, that beat. God, God, yeah. God, 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 God. For some reason, <laughs> that's just like that beat works on just about anything, man. It just, I don't know what it is about it. It just, it just drives. It's one of those beats. And so on with the show. The, I want the show. God, that's so God, good, God, dude. God. And then obviously yeah. on and on and on. But the thing that yeah. always I liked about you too, you had the Mighty Mouse fucking shit. Yeah. And, and and we were talking about underdog and the underdogs. And you're a big fan, obviously, of the underdogs. What this show is really all about, the underdogs. So one of the things I love that you said is that you put a lot of people that are unknown on the new album. Yes. Record. You keep saying record. I keep saying album. Yeah. Is there thing. a difference? Hell no. Okay. Same thing. Um, you can except call for the you... fact that we're dating ourselves by saying record and album. Yeah. 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 yeah <laughs> That's the only so. thing. I guess so. <laughs> um, but not so much, man. Vinyl's making a massive comeback. It is. You're right. So a lot of comics. So, so we're cool. The, yeah, we are. We're cool. Putting albums out. I can yeah. say albums. <laughs> Tom Lee said I can say albums. Yeah. Um, what... So who some of the artists that you have on that you really like and how do you find them? You know, because we talk about comics. They all, you know, there's oh. a good community of comedians that pull each other up, which is really fantastic. And that's what you're talking about doing with musicians. That, and But you also are finding people from all genres of music. Yeah. I love that about that, you. That's cool that comedians do that. And I, I'm a big underdog fan. I do the same thing. I'll just I'll just I'll find for some reason. Well, I'm, I'm a shit magnet. For some reason, <laughs> shit fucking just could finds me or whatever yeah. but i'm all i'm a, but i'm also like you know I'm a, 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 another kind of a magnet where i for some reason i'll it'll find me or i'll gravitate sort towards something that's 
that 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 draws me beat wise or style wise or sonically and i'll be like whoa that's dope and no one fucking knows about it just um and i'll i have a, a collaboration list of people that i want to collaborate with and i'll find people i'll find them on the internet i'll somebody will turn me on to something that find something else like you know you go down a rabbit hole of, of stuff anyway so as i'm making uh andros i'm making the record you know i'll have a track and i'm like oh my god this person would absolutely murder this track and so let's take uh uh knock me down that's out now for instance is that literally the one I saw the video of Britney knock pulling you out of the fucking chair? Is uh, that knock me down? Yes. It is, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I, it's the, that's the other thing I said. I it's the first time I've ever seen this mega rock star look like every other married husband out there. Yeah, she like pulled a, you out of the yeah. chair. And you were, you, I, it looked like it hurt like a motherfucker. Dude. And you were just like... And you just shook your head like, yeah. God damn it, just got yourself back up and went right to the table. <laughs> and she's banging back there yeah. like crazy. That's how we are. She, she's, she's fucking crazy town. And violent, and, yeah. 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 And I don't like, like to make your wife laugh. She's one of those punchers. <laughs> Dude. We talk about yeah, it. I know. She, like, I'm like, that hurt. Yeah, like, she, it like, hurts. She, she's like, no, the silent laugh with the, and then it's yeah. like, bah, right yeah. across your fucking jaw. All the time. Yeah. Or just, or, or just hits you hard. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, I, I, honey. Side <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, Britt. <laughs> well, at, at least she does it not only it's to me, she does it to, yeah, to it's, everybody. It's good, good. Yeah. Um, um, what was the oh, uh, the underdog? Uh, yes, and that is the track. Um, I just hit him up, hit him up on Instagram, and uh, and wow, you just straight reached out like that? Yeah. Well, if, and the, the funny story is, he told me later. He's like, got a message from me, a DM from me, and he's like. I wouldn't believe it. He either. goes, uh, no, this is some fake Tommy Lee account bullshit. It's and Tommy then, Lee Jones. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then he looked it up and he's like, oh, fuck. That's fucking, that's him. And he hit me back. He's like, dude, yes. Fuck. What, what's going on? I said, um, let me send you this track. Uh, this track has your so name. You had, you had never met this guy. Never met him. Fuck yeah. But I, I love hear, that about but you. But I heard dude. his shit right, and I'm like, right. this, this And now with Instagram and social media, you're one step away instead of having to get your, your rep or your manager to find go. this person to go, take three months to get a guy on the fucking phone. Yeah. I know. Right? Yeah. If if not longer. Right. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah. So I hit him up. He's like, God damn. So I sent him the track. I'm like, dude, I, I just, I, this track has your name all over it. He's like, he heard it. He goes, done. A day, two days later, he lives up north. He's at my house, and we bang the track out. Same with the other track, Tops with Push Push. I've been following her for a couple of years, watch, just watching her and listening to her. I dig her style, everything. Same thing. I got this super sexy, sick, uh, sick uh you know dance kind of electro electro sounding track so i reached out to her sent it to her she's like oh man this is fucking badass I let me at it and same thing over at the, over to the studio done and that's been kind of the theme here um with you know people i've wanted to collaborate with or you know uh you know just just found randomly pretty much everybody there's the only uh i'm trying to think the only person that's on the record that uh anyone might know is uh, uh his name's lucas rossi and he was in he was the singer for a show i did on nbc called i don't know if you remember it was called rockstar supernova where yeah the, yeah yeah we we were looking it was me uh, uh gilby from guns and roses uh, Gilby Jason Clark, from, right? Yeah, Gilby yeah. Clark, Jason uh, Newstead from Metallica, Metallica, and myself. And we were looking for a singer. That, that was the premise yeah. of the show. And we picked Lucas out of everybody. We did a, a record with him and stuff. Anyway, Lucas makes an appearance on the record. So that's one of the names people might recognize. We did a Prince cover that's fucking insane. Insane. Which, can you say what song? The the song's called When You Were Mine. Oh yeah. Which is typically kind Just of to a let you wear all of my clothes. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is typically kind of happy, like when you were married. Yeah, it's a definitely right. popping up beat. Well, we slowed we slowed this shit down, and it is a fuck song. <laughs> it, man, I'm telling Prince you, Prince will be proud. It is so, oh, dude. He would he would be like, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. It's just it's just it's down tempo. It's super sexy, and of course, Lucas sings the shit out of it. Um, and it, uh, it so that might be one that you'd recognize everybody else on. Oh, another guy, Pavin. He's from a, a, a group uh, called the Foreign Beggars. Big, big uh, uh, rap guys out of the out of the UK. Um, but other than Mickey the, Avalon, Mickey Avalon is another one people I'm would know. Brooke Candy, Brooke Candy. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's a there's a there's some people that won't you'll know, and there's some. Un- underdogs that you won't know but so i asked you earlier before we were recording had you ever auditioned for a band and been cut or anything and you were like no i got pretty fucking lucky so what are like <laughs> I, what- I did audition once on fucking mu- frying on mushrooms and i thought <laughs> I, 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 I thought i thought for sure i wasn't gonna make that but they they dug me i i i got hired i just from they're all everyone was like yeah let's do some mushrooms I'm like, all right, and I don't think I don't think I had ever done any, so I'm thinking, oh, what the fuck? All right, sure. And so we're doing, we do them. I don't know, probably about 50, twenty minutes goes by. We're hanging out, talking. We're like, all right, well, let's 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 go play. And I'm pretty cool as we start, but as now the fucking mush, the shrooms are kicking in, and dude, everything starts to fucking get super glitchy. On me, like everything's like, and I'm I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like I, I'm just bugging out, and I'm like, dudes, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I'm I'm fucking, fucking high as fuck, and and everybody was high, and they're like, ah, it's all good, man. (laughs) And ended up getting the gig. I don't know how, because I could barely. Somehow I was playing, but in my in my mind and my eyes did not look like what it, what was happening. They might have been on acid and thought it sounded amazing. Yeah, well, they, everyone was kind of was great. Everyone was high, and yeah. maybe I don't know. Maybe it was like the you know it sounded like some Grateful Dead shit, and they were like, "Oh, this is dope. He, he's cool. He's he can stay." Oh. I want to tell you. I'll tell. I can't. I can't believe I get to tell you this story because this is burned in my brain. So I went to Uh-oh. see you guys, probably early 2000s at the forum Mm -mm. you came back on tour i was hoping you would do the whole rig and you did and everything but i grew up in maryland so you know heavy metal parking lot i'm sure you know that video okay there those kids are a little older than me but same people you know those kids had kids oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah i'm that generation i got you (laughs) and cap center is where we would go to the dead shows and stuff if if that's whenever if you wanted drugs that's where you would go get it the dead come to town we go to the parking lots everybody's getting their opium their weed their acid their whatever selling peanut butter and jellies whatever drug salads right totally (laughs) so I grew up with the heads and the dirts and all the headbangers and the hair metal guys. And I loved all that music too. And, um, I go to see you guys at the forum and I get to the parking lot and it's like 1980 all over again. I'm like, Oh my God. It was like all those people came from wherever the fuck they live in Southern California and collected in this one parking lot. It was Camaros and everything else. Dude, I love it, it was the best. I so I was it. like, this is a fucking straight up flashback. So there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's this drunk chick this white big fat girl and she's trying to fist fight people and she is just rowdy as shit she's fire she's one of those people you're like oh man you ain't even gonna make it through the show you know, you know? it's like one o'clock yep. in the afternoon right and she's, and she's just fire. she's out there trying to fight guys and stuff and she's just a <laughs> mess right but half she's wearing naked. <laughs> yeah half naked fat as shit <laughs> And wearing these, <laughs> she's me. so big, she's wearing snow boots. You know, like the cheap vinyl ones you could get at Kmart that are navy blue with like snowflakes on them. And they have that like, that, that material. Oh, no, like, That's no. what she's wearing, right? No. So we uh, we go in, whatever, show started. And uh, if, if you've ever sat in the forum, the old forum, when you sit on the end row, the stairs come down. Like you can rest your elbow on the, the the steps right oh, here. Gotcha. It's so old. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, it's the not elevated. You can you can sit like this. Yeah. And I'm high as shit. 
And of course, you know, when you, of course, <laughs> I'm going to do you guys right. You know, when your eye just turns into a camera and I get that close up look and I just hear something coming down this because you go down. I hear something coming down the stairs and I hear this boom. And I look over and there's the fucking boot and it's her and oh, she's coming down our room. I'm like, no. get the fuck no, no. out of here. And she sits right over there next to us the whole time. Oh, no. The worst chick. Oh, no. But I'll tell you, when you got up in that fucking rig, man, it, it's so, it's crazy. It's, here's what was I want to know. Was that the one where I was flying from drum kit yeah, to drum kit? Yeah, you're the, all, I the don't big even, tent. Are you, are you Carnival of Sins tour? I think it was. Maybe I think it was Carnival's two, like a, early 2000s. Something like, yeah, early Three, yeah, four, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yep. That's probably the one. Dude. I, have you ever messed up on stage to a point where you, it's so noticeable? You're just like, fuck. Yeah, 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 not messed up as in like fucked up a part, but messed up ever. as in and got gotten fucking really, really hurt several times. From doing that? Yeah. You have? Yeah. What happened? Uh, um, uh, hold on. <clears throat> Hartford, Connecticut. Uh Dr. Feelgood tour. The drums are 60 feet. Yeah, they're way up feet, there. 70 feet high, going all the way out over the audience's head to the person in the fucking back of the arena. So we, you're right here to yeah, that person? Yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's that a, the Stevie Wonder section. No, <laughs> no one can. It's, Nobody, you're so far yeah, back yeah. in the back of the arena. The band's like this big. Right? Before they had the big scream. Yeah, well, back then they might. Yeah. Have, yeah. yeah, they were just, that was yeah. just starting to happen. But like, they're sh shitty seats. So my objective for that whole drum thing was I'm going to make the person in the fucking shittiest seat in this place have a front row ticket. So I'm, I'm doing this, and the drums go all the way out to the back. They're rotating, yeah. and then coming back. Once the thing's over, I step off. I, I I step off the drum kit, and I put my foot in a in a strap. It's like a bungee cord, and I just I let go, or I just jump on it and go and re kind of repel. And there's a guy down below with the handbrake, and he stop. He hits the brake. As soon as I just get right to the ground, it just shoo. okay, yeah. Well, I'm doing this, and this is in Hartford. I'll never forget it. I'm doing it, and I I don't feel the handbrake kick in, and I'm like, oh fuck, something 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 wrong. So I just decide I pull my foot out of the strap, and I I figure. I better get my foot out of the strap and just sort of like, if I can just kind of eject here, maybe I can get and try to land like a cat or something <laughs> because this is going to get fucked really yeah. quick. Your legs are going to go yeah. up your asshole. Yeah, if I'm yeah. stuck with my foot in a rope, I'm going to like <laughs> like reverse hang myself. Yeah. I, I don't know what's, I don't know. All I know is I got to get out because this isn't cool. And so I I went to, to get out and the, just the heel part of my foot was still in the rope and I slammed my head on the concrete of the arena floor out concussion out damn sh shows over uh, I wake up in in the ambulance and they're what's like, the last thing you remember that the fall was was just was jumping off and looking down and seeing everybody seeing the crowd and nothing else and nothing else so did you make it back to the stage I w they came and got me. I woke up in the ambulance and I was like, "What happened?" They're like, "Oh, dude, take it easy. You just you just had a, cr a crazy, crazy fall." I'm like, "Oh fuck! I gotta I I gotta get back there. We got a fucking show to, to <laughs> yeah, finish, right. right?" And they're like, "No, no, no, no dude, <laughs> no, that's a negative." <laughs> um, and so yeah, I had a a concussion and spent the next two days in Hartford. Uh, recuperating and somebody you know when you have a concussion you're not supposed to go back to sleep so somebody just keeping me awake yeah I just kind of stayed awake for you know a day and a half or so and back at it but that and the tour you saw when I was flying from drum kit to drum kit at the very end of the last time of this last kit on cue in my ears we have a an audible saying three two and on one I fucking, I, I, I get yanked from a harness off of it. 
the lights go black and the, it looks like I get blown off the thing and I'm, and I'm just gone so in the dark. <laughs> like your dad's out there with his pyrotech. Yeah, like, <laughs> the, the, here comes the grenade launcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's this like, you know, it's like a stunt thing. You know, those harnesses that pull you look like you get blown off. Well, the lights go black, so you don't want people to see you getting blown off. You just want to just be blow up. But when they're black like that, can you see anything? I can't see shit. Right, yeah. So three, two, one is a blackout for the lighting director. Lights go black. I get yanked in the dark, and the shit blows to pieces, right? Well, uh, I get the audible cue, and... It, it, the lights go black. I don't get yanked, oh, and shit. I just take a fucking several huge pyro shots to the face. What? For real? To, to the face. Your dad Did, would have been proud. No eyelash. No nah, eyelashes. Bro. No eyebrows. <laughs> front of Are my you hair fucking just serious? Sing, no you can see hair. that just coming up at you. You can't move. You Dude, can't do shit. There's nothing. Oh I'm, my god. I can't jump. <laughs> yeah, you're not. The, the thing. I'm connected to the thing that didn't work. And so I'm like, Holy I just fucking just, shit, dude. Just, just took the hit. So the second, third degree burns down my hands. Like, Holy it was just a bad fuck. Thing. So no, not embarrassing as in like a, oh man, you fucked that part up. Just embarrassing moments of like really fucking yourself up. Yeah, that's scary shit. That's, that could be death. Yeah. Damn, I, I, dude. I, I, I'm a, a bit of a thrill seeker. I kind of, I mean, I like it. Otherwise I wouldn't fucking keep doing it. All right. Do you, have you you skydive? You bungee? You yes. do all that stuff? Yeah. What's the? Would you bungee jump again? Oh yeah, in a second. I'm trying to get my wife to go, and she's like, "There is no way I'm going." Listen, we're going to Australia to play this year. Or, I'm sorry, next year, next summer, the tour. Uh, and I'm taking you. New Zealand's got one of the highest spots you can jump from. I think it's. I want to say four or five hundred. Fuck that! And, I'm she, and she's like, "Oh hell no!" I'm like, "No, we're going. You are going. I'm, we're going to get over this fear, and we're going." So, uh, yeah, I I love all that shit. Six Flags Magic. Uh, oh, you know, I love them. I love amusement parks I'm a for sure. Co- like I'm a fucking junkie. I, anything to get scared and just you know have a little poo poo in your pants. Like I'm down with that. I got a whole bit about tattoo that fucking roller coaster at, at six flags. I almost shit myself on that fucking thing. Did had you? A, we had a weed brownie before we went on and it was all bad. Oh it dude. Was all- <laughs> and oh, I was no. like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's a gnarly one though. <laughs> it is. That's an, that's not the advancement in roller coasters. That's why I say oh, all yeah. the time. Like it, from from this, sh- I remember we used to go to Kings Dominion in uh, Richmond, Virginia, like outside of Richmond, Virginia. From that was the closest one to us, and it was a big park. Eventually, Wait, Paramount Kings? bought it. There's like a Kings Island, I think, in Ohio, yeah. and yes, then the that, Kings the Dominion. Yeah, I think okay. that's their like the sister, like Bush okay. Gardens and shit like that. You gotcha. know? Yeah. And it was called the Rebel Yell, and it was an old wooden coaster, just like the one that was out here forever. Yeah. Uh, Colossus, the, the Colossus, I think it was, right? All rickety and right. shit. Rickety as fucking your neck. <laughs> and then, no and then shit. it would go backwards. Oh, that yeah. was like oh, the big thing. And yeah. then we had the one called the King Cobra that you just start at the top, and then you did one loop, and that was it. And you went back, and it was done. Now they're trying to rip your asshole out of these of oh, you on these things. Oh yeah, it's, dude. And you know they're loving it. They're like, oh, let's see how close we can get to before these guys just shit themselves. To just blow chunks. It's nuts. Yeah, if man. they didn't blow chunks, they the, the 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 roller coaster architects are like we failed. <laughs> like if we they're not throwing miserably. up shit and we're not <laughs> yeah, doing our job. Shit, <laughs> shit themselves and puking then we, we three we, people we, shit themselves today. <laughs> talking about, man. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> um I know what I want to ask you because you're a big guy. How tall are you? Six what? Six two. Uh, were you? Did you ever get in fights? Were you a fighter a lot, or were you the guy that could? Because you're also funny. Could you talk your way out of it? That's a lot of comedians. Yeah. I mean, I got in a lot of fights though. Yeah, I, mean, I I love to scrap. Man. Me too, dude. Especially, especially, but you know, I don't know. You know as soon as you start drinking Jack Daniels or tequila, someone will just look at me and I'll be, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, and they didn't even say anything. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, it's like- an, Actually I, checking out the menu behind you. The fucking shit, st- <laughs> shit stir, you know, just add alcohol and like, here we go. I love, I love, that's fun. It's just fun just to fucking scrap out. 
especially when you're with a couple of buddies because then you feel like a little bit more of a yeah you know, for sure yeah, me for and sure. you know and, and my my bros are gonna kick your ass right but yeah that's a good fight it's fun so all right can we talk about marriage sure all right you've been married three times yep what what made you keep going back did you ever oh, let me ask you this did you ever think you'd be married a third time after number two did you think you'd be married a third time no no, I didn't. I was like, you know, maybe I just don't, maybe I'm just not meant to be married. I just, fuck, why, why am I not getting it right? You know, it's just a, it's not the right partnership. What the fuck, what, you know, marriage doesn't come with a manual. It's not like, you know, it's just, yeah, and it's a lot of work. You know, they just don't magically just work, right? So, um, yes, to, to answer your question, no. I was just kind of like, eh, you know what, fuck me. I'm just going to be single forever. You know, maybe that's maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm that, I'm the kind of guy who's never home anyway. I'm always on tour. Yeah. What's the point? But, you know, um, it's like owning a house. I'm like, why do I even have a house? I'm never fucking at it. Um, but uh, that all changed when um, I met Brittany. Another quick break to tell you about our next sponsor, Omax CryoFreeze. Living with chronic pain is the worst. It's more than a feeling of discomfort. It can affect your whole life. Many of my listeners probably have some type of pain that has prevented you guys from relaxing and sleeping or stopped you from exercising. Perhaps it's been ongoing for a few weeks now and hasn't improved with any of the treatments you've tried. Enter Omax Health. If you're looking to get rid of nagging muscle and joint pain immediately while providing long-lasting recovery, then you need to try the Natural Breakthrough Pain Relief Solution Cryo-free CBD roll-on developed by Omax Health. This non-prescription triple action pain relief roll-on is specially formulated to block pain receptors, reduce inflammation, and improve muscle and joint flexibility. The best part is this 100% natural CBD-powered remedy works its magic within 10 minutes of application, and relief lasts up to 8 hours, much longer than the over-the-counter products. Look, I use this all the time i use the roll on i've been telling you about it on my neck and shoulder right here i've been using it my buddy eric abrams what's up abrams hit me up and was like dude give me the real deal well i did and guess what chronic user now chronic user all up and down here man it helps so much tight muscles nagging injuries all that stuff i promise you this stuff works omax health is offering my listeners, 20% off of a full body cryo free CBD pain relief roll on plus free shipping. This discount also applies toward any product site wide. So here's what you got to do go to omaxhealth.com today, enter code honeydew. That's O M A X health.com and enter code honeydew to get 20% off cryo freeze and site wide. Our next sponsor supporting the Honeydew is Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over their technology developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Look, I I've used some of these other trimmers before, and I mean, my taint was tattered, okay? All bloodied up chopped up i couldn't even I, what are you talking about that's why manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer the manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved lawnmower 3.0 all right that's a great way to spend 18 months their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce manscaping accidents thanks to to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. When I tell you this is premium, I mean it's premium, all right? This battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. Some of you, after this quarantine, are gonna need up to 90 minutes. Manscaped's got gotcha. you. The water resistant technology allows you to groom in the shower. One of the coolest features is the LED light which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming. They've also upgraded to a 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology. And let's not forget about the charging stand. Show your mower off loud and proud because the intelligently designed stand is a convenient charging dock powered by USB. If you are listening to me speak right now, I want you to experience it firsthand for yourself. 
Trim that junk of yours. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code HONEYDEW at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. 20% off and free shipping with the code HONEYDEW at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code HONEYDEW. Now, let's get back to the do. Um, just fucking just the craziest thing. And it's almost embarrassing to say but I fucking met her. I had followed her for fucking years on Vine. And just like... Listen, uh, Brittany fuck, is Vine. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 exactly. Brittany is fucking yeah. Vine. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know about Vine. I was like, you mean Brittany? And they're like, yeah, but she <laughs> is Vine. I was like, yeah, she's Vine. Yeah. She's fucking Vine, yeah. Because I bust her balls all the time. I'm like, Heather Locklear, Pam Anderson, Brittany oh. Furlock. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I love it, bro. I, I love it. I, I, feel, I feel bad she hears that dumb sh- <laughs> that She hears that shit all the time. I mean, she's she's got, like, yeah, she yeah. knows what comes with it. <clears throat> so wait, you got you got, you followed her on Vine. You were on Vine? Yeah, for years. Dude, for years. you're into all of it. You got your finger dialed in on shit, dude. Yeah, and I and I followed her. It was like, she's super fucking funny. She's hot as fuck. And, and anyway, I'm just... My kids that are 24 and almost 23 are like... You know, I'm single, just still like kind of dating here and there, blah, blah, blah. I'm just doing the thing and having fun and all, but I'm just nothing, nothing serious. They're like, Dad, you need to get on this app. This is my fucking kids telling me this. You need to get on this app. It's called Raya. And I was like, what the fuck is Raya? They're like, it's all like people like you, Dad. Like, it's just, it's like, it's only like, you know, actors or athletes or they're only like professionals on there. Musicians like da 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 da. You know, Stevie like, Nicks is on there. People, <laughs> <laughs> but people like you, and you got to get vetted, and you got to get approved. Okay. Like it's like you know, just there's just not everybody's on there. Fucking whatever, right? So I'm like, all right. Wow, so, you were willing to do it, huh? Yeah, I was like, all right, good oh, for I'll you, take man. The boys' advice, yeah. So why not? See what they're talking about. So I'm, I get on the thing. It's like, I don't know, two weeks goes by and I get the, you've been, uh, whatever the fuck it is, certified, approved, whatever. And I was like, oh, cool. So I'm f- f- flipping around on here and I'm like, no way, that motherfucker's on here? What? And I'm just, I'm bum bugging out. Like, and all these people are. Sir, mix a lot. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Single and shit, right, yeah. right? And I'm like, and looking, fucking, and looking, and yeah, looking, right? And I'm fucking all of a sudden, there's like, get the fuck out, Brittany. I see Brittany, and I'm like, no fucking way. And I'm like, hey, it's you know, it's, it's Tommy. Um, uh, and then you, you know, know that's legit because you're on a service that's been vetted. So if they hit you up, it's that person. Th- yeah, this yeah. is the real deal. Right. And so You're not being catfish. Yeah, I think I I I, I invited her to I was playing a LA Pride thing with Brooke Candy. Um I was playing drums and my buddy from uh Danny Loner from Nine Inch Nails playing guitar for her. We did this thing uh at the LA Pride and I said I was like that probably might be a cool place to meet, you know, and a you know because I'm not really cool with the little like one-on-one weird thing like, hey, so nice to meet you. So I'm like th- thinking it's a good spot. She fucking shows up <laughs> with, uh, she, first of all, I'm looking everywhere for her. I don't fucking see her. I know what she looks like. I'm looking for this fucking pretty brunette girl, right? And nothing. I'm thinking, fuck, she blew me off. What the fuck? And I get a tap on the shoulder. I turn around and I'm like, and it's this fucking She's wearing a fucking clown wig this this big. Of course. You know, like multi, you know, like the rainbow colors yeah, for, 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 yeah. for, for pride, right? And and she's like, hi, it's, it's Brittany. That's and your I was first like, meeting. That's the, that's the first meeting. So I'm like, okay, I see where this is going to go. Uh, yeah. Well, you got the, you got the real person right yeah, away. Like. Yeah. And I'm like, 
and we so, so it's oh, been shit. it's been all all love ever since man you, she makes you really she makes me like you're, yeah she you, makes me laugh and you know what dude uh, laughter is priceless it keeps you young it, too bro it, it keeps, keeps you young. young it makes me your face hurt a lot i mean i see know, it makes her hurt. back hurt a lot too when she's <laughs> ripping you out of your fucking chair in I your know. studio dude oh. <laughs> yeah. i know i know oh. it, it, every fucking day it's something with her yeah, she you, was, you know her. Yeah, but you know her so, way different than I do. You guys yeah. were telling some story. What's the red worms? You were telling oh, some story dude. before we started. She's, she's got this. She's got this thing. She's. I, I think she's like a closet exhibitionist. Um, she doesn't do it to everybody, although she. She fucking for some reason wants to share her. I, I call them red worms. When she has, the, you know that that time of the month, mm-hmm. um, uh, she she'll she'll fucking take pictures of of this. I mean, <laughs> or she'll just fucking she'll just come out, and just bring the panties in, and be like, "Oh my god, look!" <laughs> And I, I have such, I have such a weak stomach, dude. I'm immediately, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw up, and and I and I have, and I have. like I'm getting teary eyed right now. Oh, oh yeah, disgusting. And, and 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 I don't know what it is with her. She likes to share that with me. Maybe she because she wants to see me throw up. Maybe and I maybe that's the maybe that's the thing. Yeah. But then she'll send me pictures of her poop too, and I'm like, <laughs> and like. And, and and I'm like, why? I, I don't understand. Why are you se- definitely married? Why are you sending me why? a picture of her of your poop? And it's, dude, and it's a poop. I wish I. It's a poop like, it's coming out of the water like, <laughs> like by this that much. I'm like that came that out. Much. That came out uh, as I'm gag- once a month. <laughs> as I'm gagging, I'm like, is that? <laughs> What is that? It's that's disgustingly just, that impressive. Can, could not come out of this little tiny thing. Jesus. <laughs> she, she, put it this way: we we share everything. <coughs> Clearly, L- literally. But you said yeah. something that blew me away. You said you had never seen that. No girl. No. Has so. I mean, I've you know. Of course. You, you, we've, I was telling you, like the first time, I, there, like <laughs> as a man, you get an education on women going through life, and hopefully, you do meet one that can tell you, like, look, man, this is what it's really fucking like. And I remember having sex with a girl on her period, and when I, we were done, I looked down, and there's a a fucking I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like it looked like a purple bloody leech, and my my knees buckled. And I was like, huh. What the fuck is that? What is that? Are you okay? (laughs) And she's like, oh, it's just a clot and wiped it off like it was dust. No big deal. I mean, like it was nothing. I was like, and then I went up and showered and I just remembered looking down and seeing blood. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. God, This is sex. (laughs) Similar. I mean, we've all had that kind of a thing, but these are extra big. I don't know (laughs) what the fuck is crazy. I mean, I've had that kind of experience where like you're eating a girl's pussy. I'm in the hotel room and uh, you've ordered fucking more fucking rosé or whatever and fucking room service guys at the door. And I've answered the door just look like a fucking axe murderer just, <laughs> just from eating pussy. And just like, you don't you don't know it, but there's fucking there is blood all over your face. And the room service guy's like know. this thinking somebody's died in there. Tommy Lee just killed somebody. Yeah, right. Here you go. Sign the thing. Thanks. Bye. Oh. <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> we've all had those experiences, but but her, I don't know. Um, it's a it's is it inter, endometriosis? Endometriosis. Endo, endometriosis. Yep. It just it's 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 wild. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I just had a, a girl it. named uh, Jess Danner who was on the Honey Do with You All talking to us, and I was telling you she had these crazy health problems, and it wrapped around her insides and she had to have all these special surgery i mean we're lucky we are every Dude, day I'm so, I'm so glad i'm a guy i'd be the worst woman anyway i'd be it, like i'd be a i'd be a pig i'd be just i wouldn't take care of myself like i'll cut those toenails yeah no, no they man it bless here, all here's, of here's to here's to dudes i mean and here's girls, the women bless yeah, all yeah, of bless you bless them too but thank you but, but here's the dudes. damn they got a lot of shit to deal with they do 
Fuck. And these days, the way they got to—I mean, I couldn't afford—I couldn't afford my hair if I was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't afford it, <laughs> right? Oh my god! Oh my god, dude! This has been seriously. Thank you so much. It's been so much Thanks fucking for fun. Me, bro. Thank you for coming on. Please again promote everything—the album, oh. everything you want, tour, oh, or whatever. Jeez, I hate doing that stuff, but do it, bro. Okay, um, you're here, Andro. New Tommy Lee record, uh, October 15th is the release of the entire record. The singles are out now. Uh, Tops and uh, Hold or Knock Me Down are out on pretty much all formats. Spotify, Apple Music, blah, blah, blah. Pretty much everywhere you get music. And uh, the videos are out. Um, and I can't wait for everyone to hear the whole record. Yeah. And, and, and the reason for that being is like, I'm, I hate fucking filler tracks. I fucking, they will not be, they're not on my, on my projects. I just, I despise those like, ah, whatever. There's, there's three good ones. That's enough. Um, so, uh, that's why I'm excited for people to, to hear the whole record because the whole record really is a banger. Um, and, uh, and the, that's the reason I released two singles at once P people don't typically do that i wanted people to hear get a, a vibe for what the record's like right here's a male the, and a the female. male and a female uh energy track so i think that gives basically a good representation of what to expect on the record so go out and get it because yeah it's go fucking buy dope. It. it is man i'm, I'm fucking stoked pre -order that you're still, i love that you're do. still doing it dude and then the tour is now moved because everything to 2021 is that 2021 yeah we just released the uh, i'm uh, coming to see you when you're in la days. no you're definitely coming I'm you're coming, coming as my guest i'm bringing bro. that chick with the boots too bro no, dude, <laughs> dude we got to we got we'll to find her ass, bro. <laughs> dude thank you again man thank this you my man awesome uh, luck, as always, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. We'll talk to y'all next week.